That's a very American thing to do. That's what I was going to say. It's such like a, oh, I like this. I have money. Let me just buy it. Yeah, my fat American ass needs that. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Here's your favorite couple from the Midwest. By now, our live stream should be up and you guys hopefully have saw that we are planning on coming to the UK in June. That is going to be permitting on finances and COVID, mainly COVID, yeah. the restrictions, you know, you know how that goes. <laughs> um, but we are definitely planning, we do have tickets. We I do. got my passport. He does. And yeah, we're trying to set everything up in place. Anyway, today we're gonna to be checking out the most beautiful English villages in the Cotswold. 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 Anyway, it's part one. One of you guys sent this over to me and it looks really pretty just from the thumbnail. So we're gonna to have to see if it's worth checking out. Exactly. Via internet or real person. Real person? Real life. What is it? In person. In person. That's <laughs> what I meant. So anyway, guys, just give you kind of an idea. This was our kind of planned itinerary. Uh, slightly. Slightly was because we really want to go to Scotland. We really want to go to Edinburgh. Because, you know, it's the capital of Scotland and we're going to be flying into London. Plus, well, it's a good way to see the rest of the country along exactly. the way. Because we are, we are definitely coming to York, guys, because so many of you guys are from there. <laughs> Uh, and it looks amazing! That too. So anyway, this was kind of our plan. Uh, not exactly this specific road, but I know this will go through York. Um, so that's kind of the idea. And Cotswold, I don't know if that puts us out of the way or not. Or maybe we'll just take a detour that direction and then head up again. Yeah, see it's, oh it's past Oxford. Okay. Oxford. So it's, is, it's only two hours away. It is, it is due west from London. Is we it? weren't exactly planning on going too far west just because we're wanting to go up into Scotland. But and definitely York. I'm wanting to go in definitely York. I want to see the Peak Natural District National Park. And I definitely want to see the Yorkshire Dales we're National Park. We're very outdoorsy park. people, so let's pray um, for good weather. <laughs> true. And we might go to Leeds. Anyway, so we might kind of route it to where we go west. We might zigzag like a Z. But we'll have to see if this town is actually worth visiting. Or exactly, not. that is what we're doing in today's video. We're going <laughs> research. To, we're going to be checking it out and seeing if it's worth it. So anyway, guys, let's get in this video and check out the beautiful village of Cotswold. Let's get started right here in Castlecombe. We're in the Cotswolds. Cotswolds, you're close. Of course, it's coming up. Gotta have that. <laughs> it's very old. Everything's gonna be old there. Yeah, oh everything my gosh. in the UK. Everything young is old to us. Cute. That's old. Oh, the Cotswolds is an expanse of sloping green hills and ancient picturesque towns and villages, two hours west of London. Okay, so also I am thinking that if we do go there, which it's up in the air, but we're probably going to have to go through Swindon because uh, it looks like it might be yeah. semi on the way. Yeah. So, See that famous roundabout? Maybe drive through it. <laughs> Hills and ancient picturesque towns and villages, mm -hmm. two hours west of London. It is designated an area of outstanding natural beauty and its quintessentially English charm spans six counties, predominantly mm -hmm. Gloucestershire and Oxfordshire. Oh, okay. I didn't know that's where Gloucestershire was. I haven't looked on a map enough. The tiny village of Castle Coombe is our first stop, and it has been called the prettiest village in England. Aww. Fairy tale cottages, a parish church, and a few pubs adorn this sleepy village, frozen in time and unchanged since the 1600s. Oh, wow. The honey coloured cool. limestone brickwork, synonymous with the Cotswolds, give a warming glow even on a cloudy day. Oh, As with many villages, so parking is restricted and you'll need to use the free car park at the top of the village and walk down, or huh. try your luck with a few roadside spaces a little closer. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that'd be similar, we didn't have to, but that'd be similar to what we did in Eureka Springs. Yeah, I was like gonna we say, actually completely kind of outside of that. Of it. Sorry. <laughs> we parked completely like on the outskirts of town and then walked in. Or try your luck with a few roadside spaces a little closer. A lot of parking. Ah! Oh. Forget. They're so tight. The focal point of the village, the 14th century medieval market cross monument, was sadly boarded up for repairs. Aww. But you might recognize this area as used in Steven Spielberg's 2010 film War Horse. Another notable oh, movie filmed in the village was the 1967 hit Dr. Doolittle with Rex Harrison. Oh, so 
Why am I whispering? I don't know. <laughs> St Andrew's Parish Church is a Grade 1 listed building and typical of village churches built around the 13th century. The medieval clock is one of the oldest in the country. Most of the building has been replaced or restored over the years to the same design, but the tower is still the original 15th century structure. Wow. The village takes its name from the 12th century castle which stood about a quarter of a mile north of the village. Today there's nothing left of this structure. Well that sucks. So it's just a church now, but it used to be a castle. If you're here during lunch, afternoon or evening, then a couple of pubs offer food and drink to the weary tr Okay, let's check out the prices. <laughs> gotta go with prices. And this is... I don't know how old this video was. I am like, <laughs> No shit, Sherlock suit. <laughs> but we gotta think dollars, okay. So that's like... Eight, nine bucks. dollars? No, like... How, how much you, is a pound compared? Like a dollar forty pretty much. I, I just... Oh, I pretty really? much in my mind just add 50% on. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, anyway, beyond all that. Forged wood mushrooms on toast, slow cooked duck egg, brimalato. That sounds a, like a brunch place. That's a different. That's a different language. All that looks really good though, and relatively price wise. I mean, we normally to a sit down place, you're paying like 11, 12 bucks over here. Ooh. Depends on the portion size. Anyway, guys. Uh, yeah. So sorry about that. I just was looking at the menu. And a couple of pubs offer food and drink to the weary traveller, and in summer you can sit outside. Walking down the hill to the river, you will pass the old rectory tea room and gift shop. Cream teas are available, but only if you pre-book. With all of our locations, we'll put links in the description to help you. Hmm. One of the classic and most photographed locations That's in the so village cool. is down on Water Lane and the weaver's cottages that hug the by brook. Oh, Back in the 15th pretty. century, weavers were deemed of high status for the felt work they accomplished on the cloth used in soldiers' uniforms. They could therefore pick prime property locations near rivers due to the water they needed as part of the fulling process. This used hot water and agitation to shrink the wool into felted garments. Okay. Apparently one of the properties was home to the Blanket Brothers and it's believed to be the birthplace of the Blanket. That's such a cute little village. I wonder if it's incredibly expensive to live there. Or because it's so remote, right? it doesn't mm -hmm. seem that remote to me, but it's so remote and like out of the way. Maybe it's not yeah. near enough, a big city enough. I, maybe it's not as expensive. I don't know. It's very pretty though. Very picturesque. It's like postcard. Yes. That's not an insult, guys. <laughs> I don't know if, that, if, if it came off. Driving the country poster. lanes can be an adventure. Stepping just off the main road, it's the narrow lanes can out. catch you out with oncoming traffic or locals walking their dogs. Oh, so goodness. take care and drive slowly, especially if you're used to driving on the other side of the road. Oh, that my. and just bigger lanes. <laughs> it's all one That's lane. seriously one lane for us. Jeez. Driving through the imposing gates, we have arrived at Durham Park, part of the National Trust Collection and the 17th century house, garden and deer park. Entry is free to members as is parking. Mm. Otherwise entry is £13.50 for adults and £6.75 for children. Due to the recent bad weather and flooding in the UK, the parklands were closed to allow it time to recover. But walking down the sweeping path to the mansion, keep an eye out for the fallow deer that roam the estate. Is it a mansion? So we've just parked the car. Where are we, son? Durham Park. Is it Durham? Durham Park. It's a National Trust property. The car park is somewhere over that hill. It's a long walk, it looks And then like. you have to walk. It's about a 15 minute walk down to the main house. That's Look, that's such an American thing to say. <laughs> I just noticed the trees are all like in fencing. <laughs> I think they're no, no, protecting I, the bark if there's a bunch of Yeah, deer. I wonder if that's why I like to protect it from animals, I'm assuming. That's my guess. Uh, we did see a little courtesy bus, but I don't know where that's got now. Okay, so we're so walking. Like, yeah. It is windy. <laughs> UK weather, 90% of the year. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yeah, my fat American ass needs that. <laughs> oh, sure. Uh, that's going the wrong way. 
Ooh, wow. The arrogant Baroque house comes into view, and you can imagine the horse and carts trekking down the track to bring guests for elaborate dinners or social events. Very clever audio touch. Mm -hmm. Gosh, that place is huge. It's a mansion. That's so cool. Please tell me you can go inside. Please! The National Trust, the custodians of the property, are in the midst of a £10 million renovation and preservation project cool. to ensure future generations can enjoy the estate. It's worth checking the National Trust website for details of what areas are closed at any given time for work mm. to be carried out. Dang, look at that courtyard. That'd be kind of a fun job, actually, the... Renovating it all. Yeah, renovating, like, that's all you do for, like, a year or two. That would be cool. Oh, look at those trees growing on the side. That's neat. Look at the vines, I think. The property was created by William Braithwaite in the 17th century, and the grounds are extensive. The gardens are quite spectacular, and I imagine in spring and summer, with better weather, quite beautiful. Hmm. This one will be there. Hopefully. Early summer. That is a huge house. Mansion. I want to see inside. Okay, thank you. Inside the house, you can learn about the Braithwaite family, admiring the architecture, ceramics, and furniture, whilst being whisked back to the 17th century. Almost like a museum. The interior is sumptuously <laughs> decorated Ooh, with fancy. wooden panelling and tiles of Delftware. The collection of artefacts and though. furniture have a strong Dutch influence. Ooh, the staircase. Very pretty. Oh, wow. Whole murals painted on the wall. Ceiling. Well, that would work. Very fancy study. You see that's what it is? The state bedroom with crimson and yellow velvet hangings was made in Anglo-Dutch style around 1704. Very dark. That's where the magic happened. <laughs> the ancient magic. Jeez. Lots of velvet. I really like it. He's focusing oh goodness, a lot on so the mansion. Skinny. Yeah. But I don't even know whose mansion this is supposed to be. Overall, this is a delightful property to visit during your stay in the Cotswolds. I think he said, but I He mentioned, but the name didn't yeah. register. Like, I don't recognize. Haha, <laughs> nice. Oh, gosh. The wrong side of the road is throwing me I off. I get sick every what? time I see any traffic in the UK now, because I'm actually envisioning having to drive over there. <laughs> and I'm just getting sick. Just So I, I may not drive, guys. I, I, really, I might just have to train and bus, but... Yeah. It's not the left, it's just They're the so skinny. skinniness. Yeah. Cars are skinnier over there. I guess that would help, yeah. The 19th century artist and craftsman Bibbery. William Morris called Bybury the most beautiful Bybury. village in England when he visited it. The village is known for its 17th century stone cottages Ooh. with steeply pitched roofs and the famous Arlington Row weavers cottages, which supplied oh, cloth cool. to the nearby Arlington Mill. Oh. Love those Parking houses. can be tricky here, with very few spaces in this chocolate box village developed long before mm. the motor car. All right. So they have parking if you need to use the bathroom, but oh, you can't to park. Pay. You have to pay. That's what I was saying. Oh, you have to pay to okay. use the toilet. Twenty p is probably twenty pence. I'm assuming. Yeah, so like a quarter, but less with than very that. Very few spaces in this chocolate box village well, he developed did, like, long before the motor car. Yeah. So I could be wrong on that. If you're passing through and you just need to park and pee, that's not bad. Unless it was 20 pounds. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, goodness. Yeah, that would be a lot. The U.S. car manufacturer oh, Henry pretty. Ford thought Arlington Row was an icon of England. On a trip to the Cotswolds, he tried to buy the entire row of houses to ship back to Michigan so that he could include them in Greenfield Village Museum. Oh my gosh. Luckily for us, his bid was unsuccessful. That's a very he American did, thing to do. That's what I was going to say. It's such like a, 
Oh, I like this. I have money. Let me just uh, buy it. And move it myself. I mean, I know there's people do that all over the world, but especially at that time, just be like, Yeah. Oh, I just want to buy the whole street. Just move <laughs> it. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you guys said no. Yes. Because sometimes it's just... Too ridiculous. No amount of money is worth some things. Yeah. Because I know right now, like, Jeff Bezos and the whole yacht thing is oh. a huge thing because he's like... Dis I don't know if he's putting back together, but I know he's dismantling, like, this historic bridge. Right. Just to get his big-ass super yacht out. <laughs> Through an area of houses to ship back to Michigan so that he could include them in Greenfield Village. It would look so weird in Michigan. Luckily <laughs> for us, his bid was unsuccessful. Now. He did, however, manage to purchase a Rose Cottage in the 1930s from the village of Chedworth. So a mm. small piece of the Cotswolds made its way to America. Oh. They're so cute. I get has lost. Provided the backdrop of I'm always curious when I see these type of houses, that's like a row of houses built a long time ago. So I'm assuming they're like townhomes, like our modern townhomes. Probably. And I know they build like that nowadays. Like, I get that. Like, they're not connected on the inside. No, I get I get that. It's just interesting to see like they had townhomes, I guess in a sense. Yeah. So I'm just curious, like you see a row of houses, is there like 50 houses, like 30 houses in there? Oh. Or is it like five? Like, it'd be interesting oh, to see to the size. How many different yeah, that's what I'm saying. Are. It's interesting to see the size comparison. Mm -hmm. You might be able to count by the chimneys. Maybe. Let me try to count. I do like. Okay, so I'm assuming you got chimneys. So, like, you would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But that could be because some of these look closer than others. Maybe. So, yeah, I, I, I'm guessing that is kind of what you would go by. Maybe. I'm curious, though, too, if the people that live here, I feel like these are such tourist places. So like it's just if is it is it just a tourist town? Do just people live there and they make their living off tourism? I'm just curious if it's like one of those places like you go there. Is there much to actually do other than just look around? Oh, like is it a tourist yeah. town or is it just kind of like you're wandering around the streets and people are just like, what are you doing? <laughs> Bybury has provided the backdrop of blockbuster films including Stardust and Bridget Jones' Diary. Because oh. I'd love to actually see inside some of the houses, it's kind of what it was. Yeah. This is very pretty though. Mm-hmm. Walking in a loop along the pretty paths by the river, Arlington Mill appears. Ooh, this that's is now cool. a private residence, but once housed a museum with a collection of period costumes what a cool place produced to live. by the Arlington weavers that lived in the cottages we just showed you. Mm, I love it with the vines growing up the houses. Oh, wow. that was awesome. That little garden. Uh. Bybury should definitely not be missed on your Cotswolds tour. Kansas. <laughs> Looks like it. Oh no, there's trees. It's not Kansas. Burford is a small medieval town in West Oxfordshire and is often referred to as the southern gateway to the Cotswolds as people arrive from the east on the A40 from Oxford. It's a bigger town, it looks like. Huh. Okay, that's definitely more touristy. The yeah. long, sloping high street is a mix of pretty cottages and ancient shops that have changed little since the Tudor times. Mm, that's there are cool. numerous tea rooms, craft stores, pubs and antique shops are plenty to entice you. Don't miss out on the side streets, which have charming, cute stores to view. I just love the stone. I always really, really like stone buildings as mm -hmm. opposed to like concrete. Yeah. Just, I mean, I know they can do some cool things with concrete, but just something about it is just not the same as like yeah. all these stones that you know were like place. put in place, mortared. They were probably brought in on like carts and donkeys I have no idea but just the labor and the fact that they're still standing I think is a true right uh, testament mm. uh, this is good the 15th century Paris Church of St John the Baptist is magnificent and well preserved Work started back in the 12th century, originally oh, wow. funded by wealthy local farmers and merchants that had been successful in the local wool trade. 
they believed that making these donations would seal a place in heaven. A lengthy restoration of the church took place in the 1870s, bringing criticism from William Morris. The vicar at the time responded, The church, sir, is mine, and if I choose to, I shall stand on my head in it. This inspired William <laughs> Morris to establish the Society for the Protection of Ancient Buildings. Huh. The elaborate tomb of St. Lawrence Tanfield and his wife can be viewed in the North Chapel. Tanfield was a prominent lawyer and politician who established a country seat in Burford in the 1580s. However, huh. his reputation for corruption and harshness with tenants was remembered long after he died. The church has some beautiful architecture and stained glass windows and we highly recommend visiting on your walk around Burford. Very nice. Next time in part two of this video, we visit more stunning villages, a motor museum, the oldest pub Ooh. in England, and the Folly Tower at Broadway. If you enjoyed part one- Wait, did you say the Folly Tower? <laughs> it sounded like it. This pub in England, and the Folly Tower at Broadway. Folly. If you enjoyed ah. part one, please help us. Ooh, That's probably it. I want to check that out. <laughs> cool. Just by um, liking and consider subscribing and clicking that bell so you don't miss next week's episode and our future videos. Until the next time, okay. happy travels from the memory <laughs> seekers. Most damn well. <laughs> I can't really make that joke. So uh, you, you'll have to let us know if we should check out number two. Number <clears throat> two, part two. Anyway, guys, that was apparently Cotswold, which Cots is apparently. Cotswold. A County, from my understanding. Yes. So you have all the little villages inside. Yeah. I'm trying to think which one was my favorite place. I think Bybury yeah. was. It seemed like the most remote and just yeah. not touristy. Although that first mansion at that park was pretty True. cool. True. I don't know. It's weird because how we want to travel, we have such little time. We have so many places to see. Yeah. And do. Anyway, guys, I definitely think we want to check it out. It's just going to be a matter of time. Yes. Will be the issue. We shall see if we can work it into our. our Itinerary? We, yes, we shall see if we can work it into our itinerary. Anyway, guys, yeah, that was the video. It's a very, very beautiful. Obviously, the more and more I see of these, the more and more I want to. I just know if I go there, I'm gonna not put my camera down. There's so many things well, I want to take pictures of. You're gonna have to put your camera down just so you can actually enjoy it. Yourself I know, but I want to savor it. I'm a photographer. I love but to take pictures of gorgeous just by, things. You gotta experience things other than just <sighs> camera. So yeah, anyway guys, uh, comment down below what you thought of the video. Also comment down below if you're from this area. Oh yes. Because that would be great. Cause I'm just crashing your place. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know of any people. There might have been a few that messaged me and said that they're from here in this area. And I just didn't know, know what, exactly where it was. Know what this area is yet. Uh, but yeah, very, very much a... You're lucky if you live there. <laughs> well, no, it like... definitely seems like a... Was it? Going back in time. Oh yeah. Like a time machine somewhat. That That's cool in itself. So anyway guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we're very excited about coming over to England and obviously Scotland and the UK in general. Yes. Uh, we'll catch you guys in the next video. And yes, I do know Wells and all the islands part of the UK, da da. <laughs> I'm not letting, not leaving anyone out. But anyway, guys, we'll catch you guys in the next video. Please be safe, take care, be healthy, and look after one another. Mm -hmm.